Thomas Wolfe says you can't go home again, right? We got back to San Francisco, and uh, it was like that. We couldn't go back and do that again. We had metamorphosed so much. We were so evolved and developed from where we'd been in those days, we couldn't go back to doing that. And we said, we got to go have land. We got to be together so we can work. We got to try to live our future that we have talked about for so long. And we left to go to Tennessee. lasted as long as we have is because we uh, change and grow and learn as we go and we didn't come in on any of the a priori patterns we didn't come in as a macrobioticist or marxist or hindus or anything like that we just came in wanting to live together and be vegetarians and then we would figure out what that entailed it's like when we got here there was nothing essentially there was one house and a barn and a shack down the road and so all of this has been built over the 10 years by us what will we tell folks when they do come here to live is that you have to realize that there is a community need. It's like the community as teacher. The community needs certain services performed, and uh, hopefully folks are just willing to do that because that enables them to get to live here. We're gearing towards more and more solar energy here on the farm. And as a matter of fact, we have a solar panel and wind installation here to power solar electronics, which makes our uh, radiation detectors, our fetal heart monitors, and we felt the radiation detector was something that would increase public awareness about the radiation problem. I feel like my kids have a lot of other brothers and sisters they have to share things with. It's not just them. They don't get to get as spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> you know, our kids have a lot of friends and we know their teachers and we know the parents of the kids, you know, and it's just such a... Uh, a good place to raise a family and to really know that you're doing something for the whole world. I think that a lot of people are kind of whimsical about us because we're such good hippies, you know. And being good hippies like that is like being the leprechauns, you know. You're not supposed to offend the leprechauns. You're supposed to leave a little saucer cream on the porch for them, you know. And, and, and it is, you know, they wouldn't do anything against you, but it ain't good luck to mess with them either. <laughs> we had so much work ahead of us. Uh, our, our nose was to the grindstone and we were just working hard and it was immediately getting outhouses dug, getting drinking water happening, uh, getting a place to take a shower and all that kind of stuff. And so the first three, three, four years, we were completely busy. And then thinking it over, I thought, well, you know, we should, we should be professional, reach out, help guys. And uh, I think I'll call it plenty. There is plenty to feed everyone in the world if it were fairly and accurately distributed. And then in 1976, the earthquake hit in Guatemala. Peter Schweitzer went down to look at it. And then he came back and says, these people are in hard enough trouble that our level of technology is helpful and we should go. And our carpenters got to administer a shipload of Canadian building materials. And we built a prefab house factory that built 1,200 houses in the village of San Andreas de Zapa. And the Indian says, that was cool. Can you ask Canada for things? So we learned how to write proposals. And we wrote proposals to Canada and we built schools and we built clinics and we built public buildings. And plenty now is still working. And coming up during this half hour of today, Robin Young will be with us back from a farm in Tennessee. In fact, it is called the farm. It is one of this country's most successful communes. The farm has its own health food plant and bakery, its own laundry, telephone, and CB system. There's also a motor pool. There are medical and dental facilities, a construction crew, a solar company, and a school. It's all free. There's no private money or property. It's all organized by a huge computer. And it's here that you know that hippie spirit has not died. Ina Mae Gaskin is Steve's wife, and she's also the farm's head midwife. 
If any woman is healthy and needs help, the farm midwives will give her free care and delivery. And if she doesn't feel she can keep the child, they will. It's an interesting um, 10 years after, don't you think? Indeed. It could be an interesting combination. Mm. It did take root. We'll be back after a message. Well, it's been 33 years on the farm now. And we bought more land and we started off with the 1,000 acres we bought. A little later on, we bought the 700 acres next door. A few years back, we bought the 680 acres that we first landed on. And so we now have 4,000 acres contiguous. Peace is good for you. Vegetarian makes you live longer. Having your babies at home makes it so you know them better and they love you better and you love them better. All the stuff we're doing is all good stuff. We're really proud of it, really happy to be doing it.